Hello everyone and thank you very much for watching. This is me, Mr. P, and in this video we'll show you how you can self-host SyncThing and how to use it. So let's begin. In a nutshell, SyncThing is a service that allows you to sync files between multiple nodes. For example, you have your phone, laptop, and a server. So you can set up that each node has a specific folder that that full content on that folder can be synced across all these three nodes. And amount of amount of nodes you can connect to a sync thing, your sync thing network is unlimited. You can connect 100, 200, 1,000 nodes and they're all going to start syncing stuff between them. And the limit of the files or how big the file is, is no limit either. So in this video, I'll show how to self-host sync thing, how to use it. And how I'm going to demonstrate that is quite simple. I have the built-in Android head unit inside my car. And I have some tunes at my Proxmox cluster at home. So how I can sync the music from my Proxmox cluster to my Android head unit to enjoy music while I'm driving. I don't want to get my phone always used as a tethering, as a hotspot while I'm driving. So I just want to program the audio files to be automatically synced to my head unit just before I leave my house while I'm still within my home network Wi-Fi. And as soon as I start driving, the Wi-Fi disconnects, but the files have already been synced and I can enjoy music while I'm driving. So my setup right now for this video is quite simple. I'm using my Fold 3 as a hotspot to get everything connected. I'm using my Dell laptop to connect to my home Proxmox cluster to get everything set up. And I have an Android head unit in front of me to get everything going. First of all, let's check if I have a SyncThing app installed. Yes, I do. So if I tap on this app, as you can see, it's starting the SyncThing app on my Android head unit. So let's wait for a second or so to load. So right now, right now I have no folder set up and no devices set up. And the icon I can see that is connected to my home, to my phone uh, tether hotspot. Meanwhile, on my laptop, I am connected to one of the Proxmox servers and I have a LXC container by the name of docker-yt running. And this is the container which, one, which I will use to show you how SyncThing can be set up and everything is working. LXC container is already, I have the Docker installed and Docker Compose installed. And I have the user Mr. P created for me to use it. First of all, let's jump in into my home folder. So I am inside my home folder for this user. First thing I need to create is the folder called sync thing. And next one I need to navigate to the sync thing and create another folder called config. So right now I have the sync thing and inside the folder is called config. CD sync thing and as you can see there's a sync thing and subfolder inside it is called config. Next thing I need to do is actually go and connect the folder via SMB, which I will go and, and uh, get this one going. Step one, I need to make sure that I do have SIF utils installed. So sudo apt install SIF utils. Let's have a look if it's installed. Yes, it is. So now using a sudo command and then nano etc fs tab, let's connect the folder. So I'll enter my my NAS, the IP address, and followed by the location which I will go and get that one done. So Docker stuff, I do believe the folder called. And then inside there should be SyncThing demo. I want that to be mounted to this location using SIFs, and we're going to use user. Username will be Mr. P, and the password will be this password and then I need to enter no perm zero zero so if I done everything correctly inside the folder which is inside my home folder there's a folder right now I just created NAS if I type sudo mount space dash a and fs tab pass error line to ignored I messed up probably let's have a look let's have a look at Mr. P um yeah everything looks okay i'm not sure why this is being uh, ignored okay i think i need to remove the space here yes so i left the space so right now in, if i go to nas and inside there there is a demo track i want that to be synced to my head unit so let's navigate to home directory and navigate to a sync thing folder so inside sync thing folder i have a config and now i need to create a docker compose file for me to set up the sync thing we're going to use linux server.io prepared linux uh, docker image for sync thing i'm going to copy all that navigate back to the terminal and then nano 
nanodocus-compose.yml. Paste all that in, and at the top where is the three dashes, I need to enter version, semicolon, comma, free, comma, like that. So quick rundown of exactly what's going to happen. We're going to use version free of a Docker Compose to create a service by the name of same thing. This is an image we're going to use, and this is the container name. We're going to be applied host name. You can change that. For example, host name, you can be more specific to say what is happening. So let's say sync thing demo dash yt. Then I will know what this sync thing means or why I created this. User ID and user group ID is 1000. That is fine. I will delete time zone the, the default values and enter the correct time zone for me. So now it's config. So as you can see right now, it says config needs to be mapped. And this is why we created a folder config sync thing config like that and then i can add data one you can add data one data two data three data 200 data 3000 you can have as many as you want i'm just going to have one which is going to be nas on the right and on the left i need to enter the location where the nas folder is mounted which is like that Control k is completely remove the line which one the point is at, at where is the point at like for example if i want to remove that line inside the Terminal, I press Ctrl K and it's automatic gets removed. Sync thing runs on 8384 port. I'm going to leave it like that and the rest of them I leave by default and unless stopped, which means that the container will be automatically started unless the user stops it. So right now, let's Ctrl X to close, Y to write and enter to confirm. So right now, if I've done everything correctly, I can type sudo docker compose up dash D and press enter. And right now, Docker checks if uh, this image already downloaded. If it's not, it goes and pulls that image from the URL provided, which is a Linux server slash sync thing, and it uses latest version. So let's go and see what's going to happen next. Creating sync thing container, which is great. And creating complete, cre creation completed. So right now, if I type sudo docker ps, I can see very badly formatted, but I still can see that it's running and it's been up for six seconds. And uh, I can right now go and exit and access this one ip space a to double check what ip address is got assigned to it is 157 new tab and enter 192 168 178 157 semicolon 83 84 enter and here we go i am inside the sync thing dashboard by the way I, i'm accessing my home network from outside network I'm, I'm actually about 50 miles away from my house and i'm using tail scale so if you're wondering why I'm connecting to a local IP addresses while I'm out and about and my phone is being used as a hotspot, I'm using TailScale and TailScale allows me to access a subnet, the local network subnet from outside. Okay, first danger, I need to provide the username and a password. So we can go and say under GUI, I'll say Mr. P and some simple password like that. You can specify what theme you want. I'm going to leave as a dark and say save. And right now it's forcing me to log in, which is okay. Yes, I know the password is weak. And say login. So that's it. I'm logged in. By default, or as soon as you create the first sync thing install, or as soon as you create the first sync thing install, it already creates a folder for you to sync. I'm just gonna click on that, click edit, and say remove. And remove on that. That's it. So right now I have sync thing running inside my home lab, and I have sync thing app running on my on my inside an Android head unit. So now I need to make sure that they're both link, linked. To do that on the head unit, I need to tap on the add devices and add device. And then I need to go and press on this, the, sorry, not on there. I need to go and find where is his ID. ID is a special unique uh, character ID token that I need to find it. So I think it's on the left. Here we go, show device ID. This device ID, you do not share this device ID with everyone, with anyone, because this is a unique ID specific to that node. And if somebody gets, uh, gets hold of this unique ID, they can actually connect to that node. So right now it's a long and painful thing for me to enter this ID number because I cannot go and scan it with the camera. Usually if you're setting this up, let's say from your smartphone or something, you can use the smartphone webcam or smartphone camera to get this QR code scanned. So give me a second for me to punch all that in. 
So right now, as you can see, I've entered and under remote devices, I can see Yeti. My car is called a Yeti, so it says disconnected and is unused. On the actual app, on the app on the dashboard, on the Android head unit, I should be able to see a message popping up inside notification section asking me to approve it. So I'm going to just pop it in. Device Synced in Demo YT wants to connect. I'm going to say yes, accept. It provides me the ID number of the, the actual server side now. Everything looks okay. I press add. So now under devices, I can see one device showing up, which is a same thing demo YT. And on my side, it says Yeti. So right now, both devices are connected. And right now, they're talking to each other, making sure that the final connection is established. Once everything is established, on the app, you should say up to date. And on the server and on the web dashboard, it should say connected. So right now, I need to make sure that the folder gets synced across. On the phone, if I, on the phone, sorry, on the Android head unit, if I tap on a folder and press add the folder, give it a name. So folder label will be music, like that, done. And now on the directory, if I tap, I can navigate to a directory which one I want to sync. So I'll go to a music directory and press select. So I'm going to sync store slash emulator slash zero slash music to this node. So I and to enable the node. I click create. As soon as that's done on the dashboard inside the web browser, I get a notification saying Yeti wants to share this folder with you. I'm going to say, yeah, I accept that. Click add. And now I can specify that, give it a different name and I can specify the location. So instead of going to folder path as was before, I will choose NAS. I can say, that's it. So NAS, this is where it's going to go and click save. That's it. So that's done. If I expand, expand this, I can see the global state. There is one file that needs to be synced across. And I'm going to see last sync happened 1422, which is literally just now. So by the looks of it, the files got synced. So if I close that, open my thing again and type music. Let's have a look if I do get this one showing up under music, demo track. And this is how I can sync music from my server to my car and enjoy music while I'm driving. And pretty much that is it. Sync thing is very powerful service that you can use to sync files across between multiple servers. I've been using Sync thing to move files from my Proxmox cluster to another locations and back and forward for years now. And finally, I decided to do a video about this. I'm just, I'm sad that I haven't done this video soon, sooner because this is an amazing software and it is free to use. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. And now, I think it's for me, it's ready to, to go. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.